Hello everyone, you're watching the Tyria Weekly. I'm Ozaris. And my name is Matthias. And today we have a very special episode for you guys. And with special I mean we are not covering a profession this week. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, doesn't matter because we have lots of other awesome stuff to talk about. Uh, as you might as well know, uh, beta is coming up and uh, yeah, lots of information coming our way from yeah. uh, ArenaNet. It's all arena that's fault. They've been doing way too much, way too much stuff. It's Calm just, down, jeez. Yeah, exactly, man. We have, we have other things to do, you know. They gotta eat, gotta sleep, that kind of stuff. But they just blog posts and armor and you know, uh, all kind of beta news coming up. It's it's crazy. It's never good enough though. It's like they don't give any news at all, or it's like this floodgate <laughs> of like. <Yeah. laughs> well, you can't satisfy the community, you know. No, never. So yeah, uh, last week uh, we talked a bit about uh, immersion. Uh, yeah, um, what can we say about that? <laughs> well, that at least uh, I think some. Of what, what we concluded was that immersion works best, you know, when when you don't feel like the game is pushing you to do something, when something just happens naturally, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to sum it up, like no hand holding and uh, a combination of like music art style, exploring, and minimalistic yeah, exactly. UI. I think that really helps uh, in an MMORPG. Exactly. So actually actually doing stuff in the world and not just hanging around in the city, getting teleported to dungeons, uh, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that uh, that sums up uh, what we well, talked about. We sp- <laughs> that was what we spent 20 to 30 minutes on last week. <laughs> <laughs> we could have just said that like that. Jesus we Christ. We could have just said that, man. Uh, and, and we covered a bit of the engineer, which... Uh, you know, that profession, uh, my girlfriend played that, she had a lot of fun, I, I'll definitely try it at some point. Uh, mm-hmm. But I think that I... I with lo- lots of choices, lots of different options, lots of uh, different abilities you can do. I know, right? But it feels like every profession is that way. It's going to be hard <laughs> to actually choose one to stick yeah. to until level 80. But it, it, it looked really cool, and as far as I can tell, they're, they're also, you know... Apparently, some people were, had some problems with the engineer, but they should have fixed that for the next beta, so yeah. it should feel even better to play. Definitely. So. All right. Um, so, yeah, today we have a long list of different news we are going through from ArenaNet. You know, they have. Uh, well, we. Oh God, I, I can't even start to mention it. But we'll go through the different news from the block, you know, and talk a bit about all the, the updates that are coming in the beta, because. If you didn't realize that the beta event is starting this weekend, it's starting Friday to Sunday or Friday to <laughs> Friday to Monday if you live in Europe. And you know, <laughs> they've been making <laughs> that nice drawing already, by the way. I just I totally lost me there. Just like awesome. that <laughs> I've been hired so, as a lead art designer at Arena. I did not tell you. Yeah, that. I can imagine that. Moving you know? to uh, Seat- Seattle, is that where they work? Mm-hmm. Next, you really uh, got those skills. You really, you really nailed down that dragon. <laughs> yeah. Tyro. <laughs> Tyro. But yeah, we're gonna talk a bit about you know what what's changed uh, from from the first uh, beta weekend to the second beta weekend, and we'll also be having a look at you know how they changed the the utility skill system and how they changed the trade system or didn't change it entirely, but they made some minor changes to when yeah. you can uh, access different traits and different utility skills. And we'll be talking a little bit about the AMA that were on um, that they did on Reddit like yesterday. The, the AMA man. The AMA. AMA. Yeah. After that, you know, we'll be talking a bit about betas in general. The Guild Wars 2 beta, of course, comparing it with how other companies have been doing betas for other games, and you know, and what other companies do betas? <laughs> so some, a few do. Uh. I, I have tried another beta in my time. What? Yeah, I know. I'm I'm kind of special like that. <laughs> keep telling keep telling yourself that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Nah, but we'll we'll just talk a bit about that, you know. Um, yeah. And there, there's a, a few a few points we're going to make, and in the end we'll talk a bit about our anticipation for the next beta event, what we are going to do, and what we hope to see, and all that stuff. Yep. Sounds and good. And that's the entire episode. Hopefully. Hopefully. Maybe, maybe somewhere along the way we'll get lost and sidetracked. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give up. So first, bam, 
dude with tattoo on the side of his chest. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that's actually the best place you could get it, but I don't know. I think Maybe he should get a, he should get another one on the other side of his arm, right there. <laughs> yeah, he could do that. Just get them all over the place, small tattoos. So yeah, this uh, employee uh, actually got a Guild Wars 2 logo tattooed on the side of his uh, torso, uh, which is quite a commitment. I mean, it the tattoo is. doesn't go away. Oh well, obviously you can pay to make it go away, but that hurts and costs a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it must be. Him. I mean, if I don't know how, I don't know. I don't remember the article says how long he's been working for uh, on Guild Wars 2, you know? But Guild Wars 2 has been in the making for obviously uh, five years. Yeah, five, six years. Five, six years, yeah. If he's been working on that since the beginning, you know? He says, I've been a gameplay uh, programmer from the beginning of Guild Wars 2 development, so yeah. Uh, All right, yeah. So, I mean, he's, he's passionate a lot about this game and game, right? uh, he believes in it, so it's only fair that, that he does something like that. And I think it's cool. I mean, that tattoo looks amazing by itself, so mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. So, so when are you getting one, uh, Mr. Cheese? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> how many subscribers should be hit before we get one? Like, <laughs> Don't say <laughs> that. <laughs> this is the internet. Suddenly you have like half a million subscribers and you'll be yeah. having to have a face tattoo with Guild Wars 2 on it. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not going to say anything that can be used against me later. Against yeah. me later. It's just not. No. I know the internet too well for that. Yeah. But the thing is, um, what he said was that he got the, he would get this tattoo, you know, when the game launched. Right. And the game hasn't launched yet. Oh yeah. Dum dum dum. dum. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> time. Do you think he, it says anything about a release date, or am I just making up stuff? I don't know. How would it imply a release date? Like it would come soon. I mean, they yeah. say that they have another, at least another beta weekend after this one, right? Yeah, that's true. Which would imply that will be in July, so I don't think the game is coming come out until like August or something like that. Maybe it's least. just because you want to show it off on the beach. Yeah, that, it's, it's like, no fun getting a tattoo, you know. In, in oh, you guys are hyped about that. I work for Renet and I have this tattoo. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm so cool. No, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Probably not, but. Uh... It's always fun to come up with conclusions. You never know, maybe after this beta weekend everyone went smoothly and said, the game will be out next week. Yeah, I said just, BOOM! Right there. Didn't S see that coming. Screw you. Yeah. But, uh, that's All right. interesting enough. Uh, next thing uh, is more Guild Wars 2 goodies. Uh, yeah, exactly. Series launched uh, <clears throat> their Guild Wars 2 series, uh, which consists of a headset, a mouse, and three different styled mouse pads also a keyboard from what I read from the other um, uh, thingy yeah. but um, the other post but it's not an official site so I don't know it, it is mentioned in the in the yeah announcement post at least that I'll be one right it's probably just gonna be red and white keys all over the place I ran like or this, it could uh, be like the Guild Wars 2 logo on the on the keys somehow like over the entire keyboard that looks kind of neat I actually kind of like kinda uh, white keyboards. White, yeah, white keyboard. I really like that uh, new keyboard that uh, uh, Corsair actually released recently with like a silver plate uh, background. Of course, I made a keyboard. Yes, it's called the K90, I think. They have a K60 and a K91. One is for like FPS shooting, and the other one is for MMO games. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> That's specific. Yeah, they also I have like, a. Uh, just found a picture. It's quite nice, but. What do you think of this lineup? I mean, as far as I can tell, the prices they they are fairly expensive. You know, it's hundred dollars for the headset, it's seventy dollars for the mouse. I, I mean, and when I say dollars, I mean dollars or euro. You know, it's right. for some reason dollars equals euros nowadays, which is totally unfair. But I'm, I must say they look nice and uh, they have some cool features, like you can remove the cord from the headset, and this one has like two mouse buttons on each side of the mouse. Yeah, that's an interesting design. It looks, it looks like, like it's a uh, it's a claw grip uh, mouse. I'd kind of like to try Old that. School. It only it looks a bit flat, doesn't it? I mean, I kind of I kind of enjoy the G5 Logitech mouse because it's a bit, you know, bigger. Well, I have like this. See, and I can rest my Holy pink, shit, yeah, my, okay, that's my pinky and my mouse. and I like that, but that is actually a I mean, they call that a claw grip mouse, which like you have to like hover your hand like this and claw it rather than rest your palm <laughs> on it. 
That, <laughs> that's excellent term. Just look it up. But I think it looks yeah. nice, and that Guild Wars 2 logo there lighting up, that looks kind mm-hmm, of neat. It does. And I, re- I really like the actually the, the white design of it because most you know gaming hardware is, is black, actually. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a nice change. And Do I'll also say that uh, personally, I have this is a Steel Series headset, by the way. And to be honest, it is. I was just going to ask, do you have any Steel Series things? Yes, I got this one, and it is very nice. I replaced it from some cheap version that actually nice, OC. Uh, the the mouse pads are also <laughs> insanely good. I've had a Steel Series mouse pad for. <laughs> it's heavy, the, man. The new Steel Series hat. Yeah. <laughs> No, but, but I, I've had a Steel Series uh, mouse pad for I don't know ten years or something. They're good. Quite a long time. They're, they're, nice. they're insanely good. I like big and, ones. And also a pretty good headset. I, I just think a hundred dollar price tag is a bit too much. Yeah. And it, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't look very big, you know. No. Uh, the headset I would never buy because I like headset like mine, where it goes around my ears and not like on top like the other one. Yeah, exactly. It looks like it's going to be on top of the ears, not around it, and mm. uh, yeah. I'm not, not a big fan of that design. Uh, other than that, Steel Series, I'm not a huge fan of their. I mean, I would never really buy a headset of from them. I think, or at least maybe a headset because they're they're pretty decent, but not like a mouse or something. They don't ever really appeal to yeah. me from their lineup. So, I, I'm personally an uh, old Logitech fan, so I'm probably sticking with those. I can't. Is that is that is that a Logitech keyboard? Because. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, yes. It's a light good tech keyboard. Good call. I have like the cheapest in the world. I yeah, this like, one too. You get this like for free with your PC, like. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think I think I paid. I had a G15 at some point, and then I poured some coke into it, and it <coughs> kind of refused to live on after that little, little incident. So I I got one from like 140 krona or something. Th- that, that's the biggest thing, right? Because with keyboards, uh. You know, I kind of want to have that, like that K90, because it looks awesome, and I, I really want to have a, a, a mechanical keyboard because mm-hmm. they sound amazing and they type really good. But yeah. you know, I drop so so many stuff on my keyboard that I don't know if I want to have one because I go through these keyboards quite a bit <laughs> in the course of the last ten years at least. So. Well, it's funny, when I had the G15, I managed to spill stuff into it twice. Now I had this uh, cheap keyboard for I, uh, three, four years or something. It's and then crazy. it doesn't happen well, anything I, with it. Yeah, yeah and I haven't <laughs> had it. It's just like, what the I had as well the G15, like in the end, like half of my macro buttons weren't working and the backlight <laughs> was like going on and off, like because yeah. the cola came in and stuff like that. So <laughs> not good. Not good. Right. Right. But uh, let's move on, Rosie. Got a lot of ground to cover. The big beta weekend preview. Yes, that Woo. was one interesting post. This guy is serious. This guy has a serious <laughs> face. Um, He's staring very angrily at somebody. <laughs> oh God. Arena Red developer. This is like a, a hater. Like, <laughs> is the game not yeah. out yet? What the fuck? <laughs> it's like a, a true hater. <laughs> true hater. <laughs> All right. So. We're keeping our characters. Yay! Hey, good call, Arena. Good call, Arena. Indeed. Um, nobody wants to do that 500 times, and then when the game comes out, do it another 500 times. So, <laughs> you know, that's good. Yeah. It's uh, really- we get to enter the catacombs. You said the lava cap was raised to 80 max level. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it, apparently it's it's 80. I mean, the zone uh, right below you'll see that they're they're adding a new zone called. In fields, I think, yeah. and that that goes up to level 35. So you can't actually level through PVE to much higher than 35, but you can still level through PvP. Right. Except there isn't much to get from it, you know, because there ain't any other zones you can go out and visit in the world. So it is kind of just you can go PvP and then you can do some more PvP and then you can do some more PvP. <laughs> right. But it's, I mean, it's it's all it's, it's fine. It's, I, I don't mind that there is no level cap. It means that people can kind of keep grinding and. It also means that if you you know have a lot of time, you can perhaps get a, a good start head start for the next beta weekend. Yeah. Where they may you know uh, have more stuff. And they, they they you know they only release the PV because that's really like you know exploring the world part of the uniqueness when the game comes out. You know that's yeah. part part of the reason why you buy the game. So yeah. that's kind of good that they restrict that. That they don't restrict the leveling is not not an issue because in structured PVP you already be leveled to that level anyway. So. 
it doesn't really matter if they let you love the yeah. lady in World No, no, World exactly. Or not, so. It's it's all fine. Yeah. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad that they don't add too many zones because, as you say, exploration is going to be a huge part of this game, and right. I don't want to have everything spoiled for me. Hmm. Uh, I've actually heard that they've added some more content, or changed or added new content to some of the zones we already played it through in the last beta. Uh, yeah, especially the World v. World they talked about. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. They, uh, oh, my headset is going empty. God, I'll leave. <laughs> okay, while you fix that, I'll just add one thing about the catacombs. So these, uh, what are they called again? It's called Estelonian catacombs. That was also available in the last beta, but it was only available in the story mode, which is kind of the easiest mode you can play the, that dungeon, or any dungeon. But now they're adding additional difficulties, so you can actually go back in there and, you know, try out the... Well, the hardest difficulty you'll be able to play in dungeons on, so... Right, right. Uh, hopefully we'll get to that level and get to try some of that and make some footage. That would be yep. really ace. That would be great. Yeah. All right, but you were saying about the world was world? Uh, well, they, they made a po in the post here, they talked about that they're actually uh, adding even more jumping puzzles to the world for world map, because as far as I know, there is already one. Um, and they're adding an underground system uh, where people can attack each other with also like PvE-ness involved where all sides can fight over a certain PvE event or something like that I'm not quite sure you were you were a bit more knowledgeable on that uh, part yeah I think I went a bit more into details with it in the uh, AMA but I'm not right. sure how much anyway so the point is that yeah there is going to be these kind of PvE-ish parts of the world, world which include some dungeons uh, mini dungeons they're not instances they're just you know a part of the part of the background and some uh, you know yeah some jumping puzzles some traps and stuff and it seems like they're, they're kind of having they're kind of designing it so it's going to be some kind of a fight pvp fight to get down there so everybody wants to get down these dungeons to get to the end to get some uh, sweet loot or bonuses or whatever you'll find them there i actually think you may find blueprints and stuff that can help you you know that seems and cool so, so people will be trying to get down there and trying to get through the traps and all that stuff and then they they hope that there'll be some PP combat down there, so you know, people <laughs> will just be fighting against each other to get down there first, and that sounds that sounds pretty cool. Right. You know? Um but I just I just hope that it won't won't play too big a part in the world versus world because it would be kinda ugly to okay, we're like five guys defending this keep because the rest of our team is down in that dungeon over there. Right. But right. Yeah. Uh I don't know. Uh, that could happen, I guess. It, it all depends on how passionate your your server is about PvP. Really. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, if if people really want to win, they they probably n and you, they know how to play. They probably won't be doing so such things. But. Exactly, exactly. So uh, another thing they said, uh, some kind of dark room they're talking about, which uh, does not imply yeah. a dark room, <laughs> but any anything <laughs> wrong? <laughs> no, but it's possibly probably really black and should be interesting. Hopefully, like, when you do, like, fire spells, it will, like, light up or something. That would be really cool. It would be kind of cool to have a big, yeah, totally black room where uh, a room in complete darkness, and then you get in there, and your your spells, like, you know, lighting up the place. That would actually be, look pretty cool. Yeah, indeed. Uh, and, uh, so, next thing is uh, uh, Mystery Forge. a uh, Mystic Forge, sorry, in uh, Lion's <laughs> Ark. Uh where if you give four items that you've looted or whatever, uh, you can give it to them and you get a random item back, which is significantly better. So it's just a way to dump your loot other than fendering it or whatever. Uh, yeah. Which seems like a pretty cool idea. I mean, it's, it's that whole factor like, ooh, I'm going to get something, maybe something good. You know, everybody likes that kind of yeah, yeah. feeling. Yeah, I, I, it, it sounds like an interesting idea. Uh, so if you have some, some good loot that you don't need anymore, you can just put it in there and maybe you'll get something better. It's, I'm not entirely sure, you know, how it differs from, well, okay, I know how it differs from the, what's it called, ah, um, oh, damn it, scavenge or something? Scavenge, salvage. So, salvage, salvage, thank you. Huh? The salvage system. Um, but supposedly you'll be able to get better items for, you know... But this is just pure, you get an item, right? With random yeah, stats, exactly so, so it doesn't even need to be good for you. So this is a screenshot of it, it looks pretty... I really love their little interface, it's uh, really nice. Mm -hmm. Looks cool. It should be interesting, I'll, I'll see if I can find enough loot to try it out uh, in, the, in the beta event. Uh, one of the more exciting things in this post is uh, automated player versus player tournaments. 
uh, where eight teams of five players go against each other in a tournament. So eight groups, four groups, two groups, and then a winner. Which, yep. you know, <laughs> why hasn't any game done that before in PvP? Like these little tournaments. That, yeah, that's exactly. just cool. It's kind. Of, it's kind of neat to have this. I wonder if how they, <coughs> if they're going to be announced in advance. If it's just gonna, you know, okay, we now have eight teams that are signed up for this. Let's let's put them together in in this system. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think it's pretty cool to have these minor tournaments instead of just having, uh, you know, some kind of ranked PvP battles against right. each other. You'll right. actually be yeah a part of something a bit bigger, you know. And you know that when you have Cause so when when you when you win in the end or something, you know you're actually better than eight teams instead of just three teams. Because other games have done sort of like that, like World of Warcraft has like the seasons, but it's that's season based and it's a lot more open ended. Where this will be a lot more like yeah. I wouldn't say necessarily guild rivalry, but rivalry, but at least group rivalry. Like you know, you'll meet the same people and you'll sign up at the same time, or you know, have some fun with that. I, that I wonder sounds. if you'll be able to arrange it on your own. That could also be kind of cool. Yeah, that that that'd be pretty cool. So it's not it's not only you know that the game organizes it, but you can actually. I, I'm that sure that that, that shouldn't be too hard to implement if it's not already in. Uh, no, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, but yeah, these it's also these these five versus five battles is kind of important because that is pretty much what's going to replace Guild Wars, if you will. And by Guild Wars, I don't Guild Wars. I don't mean the game. I mean the PvP within the original the PvP Guild aspect Wars. of the game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Uh, these are kind of going to take all that spot, so it's it's important that they're there and that they work well, you know. Right, indeed. Uh, uh, but they also mentioned that they have kind of changed their PvP reward system a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they have they have points, which is called glory, and now they're they've added ranks. I don't think there was ranks in it before. So so you have the system where you for some items you'll actually need to get a certain rank to um, to get these items and. It sounds a bit like the World of Warcraft arena system, where you have two uh, two tiers of items and weapons at the same time, mm -hmm. and you know you'll then have to be a higher rank to get the second and the better yeah. tier of the two. And I mean that makes sense. Which which I'm actually okay with having such a system. Yeah, because you have like the glory, uh, which is currency players can spend and luck rewards. Uh, reward chest stuff with useful loot while well, rank is a measurement of your success in PvP so that's kind of cool but I also think there is you'll see yeah, you'll, 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 you'll receive and valuable rank. reward chests as you climb in rank right. exactly so there's so there's this two sides to it where you can get some items for glory and you'll then be able to get something something else which is probably also better through the ranking system yeah, so you will be rewarded no matter what, which is kind of mm -hmm. nice. So there is there is something for competitive players, because what yeah. world is is somewhat for competitive players, but it's on a lot much larger scale where you're fighting for your entire soul, right, mm. and not just you know for yourself, right, your own glory or rank. Uh, and then they talk a bit about um, a sense of hitting. Uh, they're adding, uh, which is this is actually kind of unexpected because I don't know. To combat already feels really solid in that game, but uh, they talk about um, uh, constantly making improvement to the entire combat experience, better timing, enhanced sound design, uh, subtle camera shakes to enhance uh, whatever they talked about, and that's cool. I, I would love to, I would love to see uh, what they actually mean by that. Uh, yeah, especially the shake thing on the camera. Yeah, because how how will that feel in combat? I mean, I can certainly see what they're trying to achieve, but I'm really interested in if, you know, it, will it work, or will you just get seasick, or whatever, you know? Mm. Right. They, they also, they are making some other improvements to the camera as well, you know, they, well, they aren't exactly adding a first-person mode, <laughs> but they're working on that, but they're, they're, they will make other changes, <coughs> and apparently make the camera a bit more uh, steady when you're just moving around. Mm. Uh, so it won't be shaking or anything. Apparently, they'll then introduce the shaking when you're in combat. That's a whole lot matter, yeah. Right. And hopefully, all they will also you know add systems where you can zoom more out and stuff. But but they said that they made a number. Yeah, of first person and, and and for the zoom is one of the number five re most requested things or something. So I'm sure that they, if not have added that already, or that they will add it. I mean, first yeah. person shoot. First person is I think really important, especially for screenshots. Uh, and for 
you know, just nice to be able to look through yeah, it without your character I, in front I of it. Think uh, as far as I can understand the AMA, it's not going to be a first priority feature, but if they don't make it in before launch, it will certainly be added later. So it is a feature they want in the game. Right. Although I'm more, I'm more concerned that I want to have a further camera distance than a first person shooter. Uh, I also think that's, that's, that's probably some of the changes they are able to make fairly easily, you know? Mm -hmm. And something we hopefully will see already this weekend. Improved chat. Uh, they're going to add chat bubbles. The people asked about that. Uh, the local chat, so you can like talk to the person next to you without having to bother everyone in general. Uh, we talked about that in the building community episode, didn't we? How having this this chat with a you know being able to chat with people right next to you yeah, or yeah. In, in the vicinity of you is uh, is really important. For getting a well, for getting some sense of community and getting some sense of teamwork and you know, yeah, the players. It's it's really great how well Arenanet has listened. Uh, like all these these features here on this list that were pretty much on my top ten list of things that they should add or change. So, and yeah. even some other things that they added here, and think, wow, I didn't even think of that. But you know, uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, good. it's yeah, it's it's really good. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how exactly these chat features are working as well. You know, uh, if they're gonna if they're gonna work, you know, if people are gonna use them, right? Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll be using them at least. So, so I'm gonna go with an elemental. I'm back to my elemental list because they're adding uh, modifiers to the key bindings, which is a necessity for any MMORPG that has more than ten or more than five buttons to press. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. That's good. Uh, they're going to remap that, and uh, they they have completely, as far as I know, revamped the the keybind UI. Uh, so it's also possible to bind uh, mouse keys and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's uh, really really good. They made some other UI improvements as well. Uh, they actually made the minimap square. <laughs> yeah, and, of all small things, right? And and resizable, which is amazing. Uh, I I tend to when I customize my UI in WoW, I generally have a square map because you can just see a little bit more on it. Yeah, yeah, true. But also the fact that, you know, it feels like having stuff square feel like optimizing a bit because you can easily fit things together, you know? Yeah, exactly. If everything is, is circle or round, you know, it's just, it doesn't fit together very well. And this little amazing thing here, the, the energy bar on top of the health globe here. Yeah, it's great. It's a really it's good idea. It fits and, much, and much better in. And sliced in half, so you can actually see when your first dodge comes up, so that's that's brilliant design right there. Can you expand that uh, screenshot just for the? Ooh, you wanna? Ooh, you can it's see it pretty well. You can. Oh, my screen is already enlarged, so. Oh, okay. It's just Skype fucking up again. Never mind that then. How can I get out of this view? <laughs> ah, there we go. Yeah, my my screen is frozen, so it's just Skype fucking up. Okay, that's cool. Uh, uh, you forgot something about the improved overflow service. Oh my god, most importantly. Oh. Yes. Um, so, they are, they have improved the overflow service, that's <laughs> the way it is. No. So, they added, a, they added a, a, a element to the UI in your party where you can see if people are on an overflow service or not. You can then choose to go to his or over, her overflow server. Mm -hmm. And they've improved the way that people stick together when they go into an area and they go to overflow that they go to the same one. So we'll see. I guess, you know, on paper, that sounds, yes, awesome, thumbs up. I uh, hope it works. That's all I can say. Yeah, that was one of the major points as well, and I'm glad they listened to it. Right. It should make the whole If they would have ignored that, then, you know. <laughs> yes, it's wait, what? Gilbos, didn't you notice, like, this first? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, the next thing is uh, they changed a bit of the the way their utility skills and trade lines that's work. That's one of the big ones, yeah. All right. Um, a lot of uh, QQ about this, although I don't really understand why. Uh, so what they're going to do is uh, they're going to tear up um, all the abilities. Uh, so you have to choose... Uh, you get three tiers in your utility skills. I think it's three at least, and mm -hmm. um, you have to choose like four or five. And we don't know the exact number. I think uh, until the next tier opens up, and you can choose from the next 
abilities and so forth. So what this does is that it just limits the player to what it can do, sure, but it also allows you to get to know your class better and it allows ArenaNet to optimize the game better because balancing will be easier and it will be easier for them to add more stuff later and uh, it's just less overwhelming overall and it just gives you that whole immersion of that you're actually doing uh, you know you'd have something to look forward to while you level and not have everything when you level 30 already you know yeah so i think it makes it makes sense to do it for the utility skills for sure yeah um also just a, a small side bonus that you know people will actually have to farm a lot more skill points than they had to do before. Mm -hmm. Because before you can just go straight for the good ones and that would be done with it. Just say, okay, cool, I got exactly what I want now. They're pretty powerful and that's it. I'm done. I like it. And I like it. It's... Yeah, n now you have to actually keep keep uh, getting these skill points until you have unlocked the last tires because that's where the, the better point, uh, the better utility skills are going to be. And yeah, I think that's... It makes sense to have this system. I think it's good, and I also think it's a, a great idea that it is less overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, you. Nah, wait. I'll, I'll make that point later. But so the QQ comes from the fact that people liked having, you know, the whole thing that they could customize themselves, which I understand because you know that is kind of nice. But it, I think it just allows a bit more customization. People will try out different things if, uh, without having those cookie cutter specs everywhere. Yeah, I, I think um, the main problem was the trade lines, that that's actually where the, the most of the QQ comes from. Yeah, so well, what they're doing there is um, uh, every trade line is split up into three sections. Uh, I can't, oh God, I keep forgetting what it's called. 40 and 60. 40 and, oh yeah, but it's, it's a little 40 and 60. It's like ma Master, Grandmaster, yeah, and just yeah, artisanal like or something like that. And yeah. so in every tier group, uh, you get one small uh, tier uh, ability and one big tier ability. I don't know sure if it's called ability, but just uh, traits. A trait. The Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, man. <that's>, uh... <laughs> and the way it works is that before is that when you open up the first one, you could choose between all twelve major traits. Whereas now they limited that to the first one only being up to six, the second tier only four, and then the last tier only two. And the first six are like the least best, and then the second one are in the middle, and the last ones are the best kind of the traits. The least best. The <laughs> least best. Uh, yes. What did I say? The least best, yeah. Huh? No, you, you did say that. Ah. Then why are you, um, why are you making fun of me? I'm not making fun of I would never. <laughs> I'm just thinking the, the but yeah, no, nah, it's fine. When I heard this, I was like, wow, that makes sense. That's really good. And people were queuing queuing because the they, the reasons they said because a lot of people were have like have like 10 10 10 20 builds mm -hmm. where they went for all the best trades in every single trade line. Uh, and yeah, and that's of course a problem because with so many trades, I mean we have like we had like 12 trades right in each in each trade line, mm -hmm. uh, 12 major trades in each trade uh, trade line. And that's a lot of combinations you can do with uh, five trade lines times 12 and you know so it's insanely hard to actually balance it out both making sure that all the major traits are you know have the same mm, power level if you will yeah. and and also making sure that you don't have some kind of combination that makes it makes it insanely overpowered right and uh, so so I think <coughs> the idea to like that you know World of Warcraft made the same realization with the trees which is kind of why they made the specializations where you have to you know, spec out in one tree before I can go down sub in another tree. It it decreases the player's um, choice, mm -hmm. the player choice. Yeah. But on the other hand, it makes for a more enjoyable game, I think, because there will be less of these "oops, we totally didn't see that one coming" moments. Yeah, it it, it allows for a better balancing, uh, easier balancing, and it allows Arena Nets to add stuff later on easier. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah, know, because if you had like everything in one and they add like a less good skill or trade, then nobody yeah. would give a fuck about it because they already have the best one. So who cares? Uh, whereas now, you know, we've talked about this before, handholding. We don't like handholding games. A little bit of handholding is not a bad thing. I think ArenaNet is trying to find that balance uh, in between and they, they've they been doing pretty well so far. Uh, yeah, they, they I, I think 
you know, go play it first before you start complaining about something that you might enjoy. But you, it's just, it's all, it's, it's never fun to you know have options taken away from you or have no, power taken no. away from you. So I think it's just a reaction to that. And of course, the argument could be that Arena can just balance it, and that's true. But it will always be the question: how much time and effort should be going in to balance things like this? Isn't the trade-off, you know, isn't it better to then make a few restrictions that actually easily achieves what they want, and then make them focus elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because there will always be things that can improve. That that's true for any game. So. Sure. Well, we'll have to wait and see how, how well it works. Uh, and I think the thing that you need to f no, I can't forget is that it's still a beta, and uh, they—I mean, they're developers of the game that they've been working on for so long. They know what they're doing. They're not just doing something because they want to fuck up the game or yeah. something like that. Couldn't it be fun to piss up the entire playbase? Sure, let's do that. Yeah. So, <laughs> whatever. Um, so the last thing they talk about is the gem store uh, under new management in dum 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 Lion's Ark. Yes. Who would have guessed? <laughs> yeah, it seems like I, you know, there's a lot of things going to go on. What my, my first thing that I actually questioned was: Is the gem store still going to be available in your UI without going to the Lion's Ark? Yes, I have no idea actually. It doesn't say explicitly, does it? No. No. Um, so yeah, good question. Hmm. Because I kind of like that feature. But uh, I guess we'll see. But yeah, they added some new stuff to the to the to Gem Store. Um, also, uh, next beta weekend, everyone gets 500 gems, and uh, you can get an additional 2,000 if you fill out your credit card info. Uh, you will. You might get billed for one dollar, but that will be put back into your account because your yeah. credit card holder might do that. Uh, you've, the reason you might ask why they do this is because they probably want to check if the system works, especially since probably everyone is going to do that. They know that it's going to be load load a lot, and then they can check if it works and can. Yeah, hold they that. can probably test the entire system, or at least you know test everything up to the point where you have to start m making uh, money transfers. By doing this, so it's it's probably a good a, a good way for them to try and catch any errors there is on, on that line. Yeah. And it's fine, you know. I'll probably go for it just to see what I can what I can buy for those extra gems. Hmm. So, but I guess that was that entire very long news post. Yep. So very interesting stuff coming up there. In order to handle all the new people, because a lot of extra people have pre or purchased the game, um, a lot of people got invited. With beta keys, uh, there must have been at least 2,000 keys been given away over the course. I it think 3,000 more. It's insane. It's yeah, like 500 per page or something like that. So they they have really been. It's just more or less any site that has been in just a small degree related uh, related to Guild Wars 2 have gotten some. Uh, and then uh, yeah, and uh, the Amazon incident. <laughs> mm, yeah, <laughs> to my call. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know how many people came from, come, are coming from that. I guess it will be quite a little bit, but not too much. They actually re they responded to that, so I know that's been kind of, kind of a big thing for a lot of people over the last week, at least. They responded to that in the AMA, mm -hmm. and what they basically said was that, you know, we know this is the case, but that's just the way Amazon is doing it. Because, you know, uh, they are, well, they're an online store, and there are some kind of restrictions. They can't allow pre-purchase, they are only allowing pre-order, but they are a very big store, a lot of people are, are using it, and you know, so, so at least their their explanation is that they just have this good cooperation with them, they don't think a lot of people will abuse it, they, they, they see it as that, you know, people have basically almost bought the game, pledged the, to buying the game because they have pre-ordered, they have give their, given their credit card information, all that, it's not just like going down into a store and put your name on a list. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. and that's. No, you go on. I, I was just going to say that to me, pre purchase and pre ordering is it's the same thing. Isn't that the same reason why you do it? I mean, you pre order a game because you know you want to buy it. That's why you pre order it. You're not going to pre order a game just because you want to get into the beta or 
you might yeah. buy it like oh i'm just going to pre-order this just in case and then later on no nah, i'm not going to buy it anyway and then cancel it i mean who does that i mean the, the huge problem is of course that when you have pre-purchased you pretty much can't re you know refund the game right whereas when you have pre-ordered it you actually can but I, I don't know it's it's a possibility that everyone can now go and use if they really really want to how much will it be abused it's yeah it's impossible to say you know and i guess it is rather harsh to just tell you know the amazon that no you guys can't pre uh, you know you can't get access your customers can't get access to these beta events because you don't have a pre-purchase system especially if amazon is you know a really big um what's it called uh, I, I don't know I, I think they're selling a lot of games on Amazon hmm. warehouse uh, kind of type of store warehouse kind of type of store. yeah I think they're a big you know store for uh, for games so I, I I there has probably also been some kind of pressure from Amazon side you know to say uh, hey guys we know we can't pre-purchase but if you don't give us those key bad stuff will happen or whatever so yeah it could, it could be all kinds of stuff uh, really uh, it's probably a pretty good agreement in the end yeah. Uh, so yeah, but uh, for all those new people, they have doubled their servers, which, you know, nobody expected you know, when they said that they were working on hardware. <laughs> but Jesus Christ! Yeah, apparently, <laughs> just well, we're just gonna double them. You know, <laughs> if there's a problem again this weekend, we'll just double it again. It's fine. So yeah, 20 new servers. Here's mm -hmm. a list. We'll link all this uh, stuff we talk about in our comments, so you can check it out. Uh, that's a lot of servers for a beta. That's a lot of servers. But I'm wondering, I, I'm guessing they're making, you know, ready for release anyway, so they might as well just get as much Yeah, especially as since the people that pre-purchased and pre-ordered are likely going to play anyway, so they can base it on that, which... And know. hopefully they're, you know, hopefully they're getting some kind of numbers in from the, from the retailers. Yeah. But um, I, I actually didn't had any you know technical server issues I had the overflow problem as anybody has had uh, of course but I didn't have any you know crashes or disconnects or anything like that the login so was a bit of a problem where yeah. I had to log out at some yeah. point but besides from that uh, from on my end it was running very smooth mm. though I can I later I've you know realized that a lot of people was apparently having problems and I'm guessing that's on you know the the popular servers like the Reddit server or the server where some of the major fan sites or or press yeah know, yeah sites yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah apparently it's been actually been warranted a, a lot of issues were also with the graphics and stuff though because you know it was not optimized for for your core because it was on low priority and only used one core and it didn't use your video card and all that chef stuff mm -hmm. uh, which they have all improved now so uh, it's going to be yeah, fun to watch they have put uh, stuff out in, in more cores and balance it out you know and I mean, there, I, there's definitely still some problems I was pretty much already running 30 frames per second 60 to 60 to 20 depending on where I was really yeah so I was running acceptable. I think that the biggest problem was when there was a lot of players because a lot of players. Worldy mean worlds, yeah, that went down to 20 or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of players mean a lot of CPU power. And well, if if they don't, if their CPU utilization just wasn't good enough, then of course that would cause lag. Uh, so, but but they said they've been uh, doing a lot about that. So hopefully that optimization. We'll we'll be able to actually see that or feel that in the in the next beta here. Yeah. So uh, FAQ. Someone made this amazing FAQ for new players. Uh, I have not read it. I probably will not read it. Uh, but I've heard it's a really good read for people that are new to the game. Uh, there's a lot of information here, even screenshots and video. Uh, we'll link it in the description. Go check it out if you're relatively new to the game. Uh, or just bored from staring at the Facebook page that doesn't get updated by ArenaNet. It's probably a yeah, a good a good site to go to if you're new. But the amount of information were <laughs> insane. You know, I was just uh, going in there taking a look and I was like, uh, what? Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I probably know enough about it. So <laughs> yeah. Next uh, FAQ is a bit more interesting. It's that AMA we've been talking about. So it's this huge do Google document here with shit loads of questions. Um, I've yet to read through all of it. I've, I've started with like, I've read like through 10, it's, 15 it questions. Is, it is 
crazy. But it's but super extensive and super detailed. So, did you find anything interesting in the, in what you read so far? Uh, yes, actually, um, I can't find it here. Did they actually talk about the the tier system here? And uh, there was this question uh, yeah. about guilds uh, because people are concerned but that there's only hundred guilds in the game. Uh, 100, mm -hmm. 100 guilds, 100, 100 <laughs> players per guild, but they stated they are working or are intending to have a system where you are able to increase that over time uh, by the influence that you gain with your guild. So it's like a team effort to expand your guild. So that it's actually kind of natural to do that, so mm -hmm. that so that you can't uh, just make a huge guild and then gain shit of influence because you happen to have a, a big guild, you know? Yeah, you need to so be... It, it seems like there'll be some kind of leveling progression system for the guilds. But in a very interesting way, because that whole influence system is very extensive and interesting. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how... I'm... I, I haven't looked much into the guilds at all. Uh, that's not been a focus point for me yet. No, no, me neither. But I'll, I'll, be, I'll be looking into... Well, I'm interested in seeing how they're going to do it, because... Yeah, World of Warcraft, they introduced the guild leveling system in, in the latest expansion. Right. And that didn't work out terribly well, to be honest. It didn't it didn't feel like something you're really coming together as a guild to, you know, improve and progress you on. You just played the game, and it was just something you gained along the way, really. It's not like... Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, you everything you do in the game is more or less already... You know, because you're getting something from it. So why 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 have this passive guild leveling system? Yeah, on top exactly. Of it? Why not have something where you actually had to do something to go out of your way as a guild to do something cool? Yeah, whereas in Guild Wars 2 you will have that, and uh, it will be very interesting to see. I actually think, you know, in WoW my guilds have gone from le uh, less to less people over expansions because mm -hmm. you know I got into 10 man rating eventually. So you have like your 10 man rating core and then maybe those guys all have friends which are sometimes online so you have like a maximum of 15 to 20 people online uh, yeah. whereas here i might be interested in having a lot more bigger guild because the stuff that yeah, you can wh do in why, why not? world and I mean, stuff like that so exactly pvp yeah because um, i kind of like that you know in vanilla wow you had like these huge guilds and not everyone knew each other per se very well, but you had like these groups of people and you know, help yeah. each other out of a lot. And you'll just be jump, jumping into some groups with some people and like, oh, hey, I haven't been playing with you before. Hey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Definitely. Right. Well, actually, when, uh, just to go back to the AMA thing here, uh, I think one of the, actually, what, what, what I like the most about it is, is not any particular answer they gave, but more the impression I was getting that Damn, they've been working hard over the last one and a half month. Yeah, yeah, to it, the game. it really shines that this is proper beta testing. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. Yeah. It's and it's just like, uh, guys, how about the range capabilities for the for the guardian fixed? How about the engineer fixed? How about the pet AI fixed? Yeah, you know? yeah, it's yeah. Just all, always, just well, we yeah, we worked on that. We've improved that. We have a. Where like, and it's just uh, half the answer is, is probably something like, okay, we have improved on that, and we, or we're going to improve on that. Yeah, it's very refreshing to see a, ga a game uh, developer be that excited about it and actually doing something about it. Yeah, it's it's just I I don't know, man. I, I'm, Especially I'm, since we've I'm, been used to Blizzard, and not to bash Blizzard because it's a good company, but they tend to take pretty long with their patches, and they they have a tendency to say we'll fix it, and then suddenly like next expansion it will be fixed or something like that yeah which Blizzard is also in kind of in the odd spot you know where uh, well the, we are in, we are in a beta stage now so of course changes are going to go out faster than they yeah. will be when it's in live you know because they can actually be allowed to play around with it now mm -hmm. uh, they can't really when it's when it's live not in the same manner yeah and that's that's kind of our problem as well together with the fact that this is a new game and yeah. that means that they have quite a lot more free, a kind of a lot more freedom than than WoW has because they have a lot of systems that are in place. They have a a lot of core mechanics that just are there already that they can't change. True. Where, whereas Guild Wars is a bit more free in that. But yeah, their fan base is. expects something already, whereas this is more fresh, a uh, fresh IP. They can do still mm -hmm. things, uh, which but, but which is, is why they're probably, you know, reacting this way to their community with all these 
changes that they're making. Yeah, but and it's amazing to see how much you know effort they've been putting in this last week to getting well that across to the community that they made a lot of improvements and that they're listening. You know, right. Uh, the CEO of Tryon uh, Worlds, actually uh, the producer of uh, Rift, uh, they actually talked about, you know, uh, why MMOs are, why SWOT or Star Wars: The Old Republic uh, did bad, uh, mm -hmm. and it's because they they are slow with development. Uh, when you make an online service, he said, or when you make an MMO RPG, you make an online service. You don't make like this single package that you work towards and then you know do whatever. You, yeah. You're constantly updating, and that's what Trial especially has done really well because they had like six major patches uh, from their release until now. And if you compare that to a WoW state, for example, they have like three patches over twice as long. So I, I think they're in a situation where you know, in the beginning of a game's life life cycle, it's pretty important to fix fix major problems, right? Yeah. Of yeah. course, uh, make the game stable. Uh, show that you are supporting the game. I think that's actually the, one of the most important things at all. It's just you can't you can't go on vacation or anything because you release the game. You really have to work hard to get new content out and some interesting stuff, especially right after release, because you want to show people that you still support it and, right. and give them this impression that we care about it. We're going to fix it. We're going to keep improving it, and then people will stick around, you know. And and at some point you'll get a more a, a more tight knit community. But where you perhaps can relax a little bit more on the amount of content you're putting out there. Yeah. Because you know, you know the people, who, you know the fans who are now there will probably stick around. But right. It's especially in the beginning. Uh, indeed. And while well, the advantage of being a really solid game, so they had like even if not a while, it took forever to take out patch, uh, common patches. But I, I'd say in vanilla we had like 12 patches until the first yeah, expansion. Yeah, but it also had like two-year life cycle, three-year life cycle, or something like that. Vanilla WoW, so. It's yeah, yeah, true, but it's it's three to well, around four four patches a year. So I'd say though they were a lot faster in the beginning still because they yeah. there were a lot of a, a lot of content missing. But what we're going towards with the new MMO genre, what you also have seen in WoW already is being able to do more stuff in a shorter amount of time, uh, because you know you you raid faster, uh, mm -hmm. raid finder, dungeon finders, you know yeah. stuff made easier, different modes. I think it's very important that you frequently get updated, and I think it is. Blizzard really needs to up their notch when it comes to that part because they. I've I've always had the feeling that they they wait too long with releasing new content, especially in Cataclysm. It was kind of a wait at some point. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's very true. And to be honest, it seems like Guild Wars have learned from that because you know they have this. Uh, we have we have talked about this before that they have this uh, live team that are going to keep adding new content to the game. Mm -hmm. Which it sounds like it's not not like patch format, but more like wow, new dynamic events suddenly popped up, you know, that you haven't seen before, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and they also read some, I read somewhere that adding patches to the game is I apparently an insanely fast uh, process. Mm -hmm. There will hardly be any downtime on the servers for adding a new patch. It'll, it'll more be like you log out, uh, you close the client, you start the client again, patch is applied, you you go, you know. Mm. Yeah, the Which client actually it, seems, uh, you know, it updates itself, updates itself already really nicely. So yeah, it does. Just, it's so nice. that 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 should be a strong tool for them. All right. Which we kind of flew over into the main topic, which is betas. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's true. So, right. Um, so the there, way Guild yeah. Wars Two. Sorry, can I or will you? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So the way Guild Wars 2 are uh, doing this is, as as most of you probably have noticed, short events, very focused. You know, in uh, and in focused, I mean, they are opening a for opening a forum. It's only opening for that time, so you can get a lot of feedback. The developers are taking a part in the in the betas, and a, a lot of players, short amount of time. And then they have this break where they're just iterating through all the all the feedback they've gotten. <coughs> so which is mm, yeah, you well, know they, they've been really good with that. I don't know if you've been on official forums during the beta, but uh, they actually had you know highlight uh, they highlighted all the forum posts that got replied by official ArenaNet guys, and they were really responsive. 
like in game from what I've heard as well mm -hmm. as on the forums and, and that's really yeah, and refreshing. It's, it's interesting because uh, when a developer is playing you can apparently see that they have some kind of a reading attack over their head so they're not even trying to like hide they're just being the, out there and saying hey this is this is me I'm standing right here you can just you know come talk to me. Yeah whereas if you compare it to World of Warcraft for example that's the only game I can really compare anything to because it's the only MMO I, I really played but uh, there you have like the GM. Ooh, that's a GM. Like ooh, you don't really know mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah, but they're, like they're not they're not walking around. All all players, all developers playing are just. Of course, this is a beta, so it, it's different. No, they're just they're just regular players. You can't tell it. So yeah. Um, but I think that's a interesting decision, at least. Yeah, very. So. Uh, re regarding the the whole <coughs> length me. of it, I I think. I'm not entirely happy with the way they're doing it. I mean, I, I, I get the way that, okay, we have the short beta event and we are we are then doing everything we can to have a very stable build of our game when that goes live, you know? So probably spending a lot of time on having such, you know, this very, very, what's it called? Uh, well, the, the, the game just runs insanely well, you know? And it's there isn't any major bugs that prevent you from playing and all that stuff, so it's just, are you saying it's, that they should have invited players sooner than this already? That what? They should have invited players sooner than what that they did, that they've done? Um, that is one of the things I think I'm going towards. And also that they, I mean, I would have liked to see them do it a bit more often, perhaps on the cost of some kind of stability or whatever, because it's this is so much different from, again, the way uh, Blizzard have been doing it, for one, because they have a... They have a constant Open beta, beta running. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, and that has been the Mr. Pandaria has been going for on for a couple of months now, and will probably go on for another couple of months. And like small it, patches it, along the way, constantly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and they're saying, okay, you guys can just test the content as it hits the server. We will evaluate it on it, you know, and uh, well, we'll just evaluate on the feedback we are getting on the fly and make changes. And you know, there's no. Whenever the, a new build hits the the beta servers, it may break the game completely. It may add some skills to some systems that are not at all ready to be to be used by the players. Because oh, that was just you know the build we the build we had that we pushed onto the servers. Whereas in in the Guild Wars 2 side of things, a lot more work is being put in to to make sure it's a well perfect beta build that we are we are seeing. Yeah. Uh, so th the way they're doing it is, you know, y like you said, uh, they wait a longer time in between, uh, which I think is good because they're actually, you know, this is actually a beta. They're actually doing something and they're fixing stuff and they're mm -hmm. listening to the community. But you also have to remember that these guys are developers, with, but they're also gamers at heart. So they, they play the game. I'm pretty sure that they have a constant group of people that play the game every day they, they have internal QA I'm almost 100% certain they have actually I, I am certain they have in, internal QA yeah. uh, for, for testing everything I think that's not so. a, a bad thing because you know you can have all those players in there but it probably like 95% will not give that much feedback and just play the game you know so yeah it's true and I, I think it's a, I think it's an alright way to do it also a small, a small thing about this is actually that when we only get to have our hands on the beta for these short amounts of time, we are going to stay hyped, we are not going to see everything, we are only going to get a glimpse, more or less, of what the game is going to be like, you know? Mm -hmm. In comparison to, again, Blizzards, that has, where you'll actually be able, you'll be able to try everything. At the, at the time where the Mr. Pandaria beta goes down, you will have more or less I think you'll have every system that will be in the in at, in at release will be in the beta at that point. So that means that the players who have been there from the beginning will more or less have tried everything. They'll been going through everything. They'll been they will have been playing something that is almost a you know a live game. Yeah, indeed. And and yeah, but that's uh, and I'm not sure that's a good way to do it. To be honest, I'm not. I think it might be too much. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, so too. I I um I think Guild Wars 2 does uh, has it pretty nailed when it comes to beta. I mean that they, they, they might take a bit too long, but yeah. 
I think they want they want to have a solid release, and I think that's that's very important for an MMORPG to have that because she recently saw in Star Wars where, like two months later, they brought like the ma- major patch where a lot of stuff that is in that patch should have come with the release already. So mm-hmm. yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree with that part of it. You know that they just keep rolling the betas until the game is good enough, mm-hmm. because you'll also see just stuff like Diablo. They had a a huge a huge open beta right before launch, you know, to test their infrastructure, which is also a way to do, you know, stress tests. We had a Guild Wars 2 stress test, uh, Battlefield 3 had a stress test yeah, uh, right before launch. It's, it's, it's cool and all, but I think the problem was that apparently at least uh, Blizzard didn't really do enough. They, they had this release date, they were going to stick to that, and that didn't work well. No. I, I don't know if it was because their stress test just didn't, you know, gave them enough info to be able to foresee this problem, or if it's just because they were set on a release date, and then it was just, oh, sh- well, our servers can't handle it, but we got to release the game. Yeah. I, I think Guild Wars or ArenaNet has a pretty tight lid on it. They're like, they, I think they have some sort of date-ish that they want to hit, but mm-hmm. what they do is, like, they, they do the change that they think are necessary and then they let people in on a massive beta weekend event and then they get a huge amount of suggestions and then they try to fix that as much as possible in their own way because they still yeah. want to be comfortable with it of course uh, well, so they keep a tight lid on it while being open as well so they're really open to suggestions but they really keep like lid on it and say fun yeah okay you guys have gotten your input now we're gonna work on it and try to improve it I, I will almost promise you yeah that they have some kind of internal you know <laughs> date they're trying to hit mm. with different things also like uh, last week we had a blog post uh, sorry guys the beta isn't going to be this, this weekend but we were working towards it so that kind of indicates that okay they had some kind of internal deadline that yeah. they're trying to hit and that's 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 fine of course but I, I'm totally down with that they, they shouldn't rush it especially because this has turned out to be a real beta you know when I when I went into the first beta and we're like, well, this game seems to be running just great. It's fine. Why? What's what's the big deal? You know? Yeah. And and then you know, this month and a half afterwards, we see all the changes they made, and it's like, all right. So it was a beta. So they were actually uh, taking all this feedback, and they made a ton of changes. Yeah. Uh, Indeed. Uh, so so yeah, that's that is. Uh, so, but you know. The most important part, I think, is uh, congratulations to ArenaNet for being a proper beta and not doing this weird beta that is pretty much a hype demo for mm-hmm. for the game. That's yeah, exactly. We have seen that a few too many times before, and uh, it's <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't know if it works <coughs> actually. <coughs> Sorry. I think it's it's of course annoying when you have a, a a good a rather good you know beta and then have a horrible launch stuff like that. But I have no idea if these hype betas actually work. I mean, that is pretty much just, this is a demo, but it's actually a beta, because then we are kind of not promising you anything, you know? No, exactly. And so so, what, so when should a beta start, and what is a beta, exactly? Because, you know, that's that's the problem. Like, because a beta used to be what ArenaNet is doing right now. It's, it's like the core of the game works and it runs smoothly, but you know, stuff needs to be changed and edited, and yeah. it's still ra- very rough around the edges. So, well, I, I think that's that's a pretty good description of a beta. But if you, I mean, they they've had several betas before this. We know that you know press betas and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I honestly think they could have added some players into the mix before this, mm. uh, because the game is very far in development. There's no doubt about that. Mm. So, so I easily think they could have had uh, some events earlier on, perhaps just you know closed invites we can sign up or whatever you know to get into the beta. I actually think if if you signed up for the newsletter, you had a chance to get into the beta, didn't you? I think they said that at one point. Uh, yeah, I think so too. Uh, so you know they they could have done done something like that, just a small amount of players possibly, uh, and then yeah, just I just got the feeling that. They are this fine development that they could actually have gotten some help for having some players in earlier because we can see how much how big a difference it is when a lot of players suddenly gets their hands on the game. It is crazy. The extra amount of feedback, the extra amount of bugs you're finding and all that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I also think they could have the betas more frequently. I said that uh, before already, right? But yeah, but I think they do it as frequent as they feel uh, is possible in their own hands because they want to actually fix the things that people talked about. But yeah, this absolutely. is where, where their whole system comes in because if this was World of Warcraft, they would fix that along the way. Whereas they like, no, we want to make sure we do it in have all that stuff before we start the next beta with the Which you yeah, can argue definitely. if it's good or bad, but I, it, it works for them. So and and you know may, maybe the the reason why we got or uh, it just it's very likely that the reason we got this uh, delayed beta is because of the hardware thing and they wanted to have that part on the yeah, control first. It, it because just, it is. Yeah. Okay, it, it is iterative game design as we talked about before, and that means that they're they're going to make rapid changes. Yeah. And I'm sure they have have had a ton of changes ready a couple of weeks ago that we could have tested out, or a couple of you know fixes and all that that we could easily have had our hands on and then given them some feedback a bit earlier. But right. But uh, I think it just all comes down that they won't have control over what and how, whereas yeah, whereas Blizzard has has a lot less control over it because. It's like this constant patch, and it might go wrong. It might work, might not work. Might destroy the exactly. game for a while. It might not. So, yeah. You're probably spending a lot of time making sure that the build you're pushing is stable. Yeah, exactly. You might, you might argue if if it's a faster way or, or a slower way to do things. So. Yeah. Another thing I would like to see them do is probably to change the time they're testing it to not only be weekends. Yeah, maybe like a week or something like that, you know? Yeah, exactly. Then let, let it run a bit more. You'll, you'll get even more feedback. There'll be more more people will be able to get their hands on it. They will have more time with it and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, weekend ain't, uh, isn't good for anyone. Uh, well, it is good for some. <laughs> it's not good for everyone. <laughs> it's not long enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's my, my hidden agenda here. It's just, what? Only three days? Come on! Right. No, but I kind of, I kind of feel like... Uh, that they will get some more players in if they also, you know, make make it span some weekdays that they wouldn't get in the weekend, and people will get a bit more time because a, a, a weekend just isn't a lot of time to to test the game, especially not if you are an average guy that has a lot of stuff to do. Hmm. Yeah. Um, right. Betas, man. Betas. So oh, well, I, I I still love them. I love to be a part of him, and I love. I love this rapid development you see in betas because you you never see that on live, but you see this changes are coming so fast. Yeah, yeah. And to to a lot of different things, and you see how they are how they are trying to balance stuff, or how they are, uh, you know, reimagining things and all this. Uh, I I love to be this close to uh, game development. Yeah, it's really cool indeed, and be a part of it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. So, uh, right. But was that uh, <laughs> was that the betas? Yeah, I think we've talked enough about that. Um, I've said what I wanted to say at least. I don't know if you want to add anything. Uh, nah, I, I think we've been around. So this weekend beta, what uh, what are we gonna do? What what's the plan? Uh, what is do the some plan? dungeons. Do some dungeons. Oh yes, please. I want to get up dungeons. there. Some dungeons. Hopefully, get to do one dungeon. <laughs> That's a better way of saying it. <laughs> I, I want to get out and hit, up and hit those level. Is it 30 for the dungeon? 30. Or yeah, 30, 30, 35. I think you can do the normal mode at 30, and but the harder mode you want to be 35. Okay, I think. I'll, I'll be happy just getting into the normal mode then. Right. As as a start, you know, um, trying out some more classes, right? Yeah, uh, I want to try at least one more profession. Uh, mm -hmm. That I haven't pl that we that we haven't <laughs> that we haven't covered <laughs> before, uh, some world v world because that's just pure fun. And, yeah, it is. And I think I really want to get into that structured PvP. Jack, maybe get that tournament going. That that sounds. It really could fun. be pretty fun. Just trying to team up with some other guys and get a um, get a five versus five running. Yeah, I just just, about, just just a single tournament, right? I just explore. I wanna focus less on the, the hearts. Of course, you still have to do the hearts, but. Mm -hmm. Explore a bit more and find a jumping puzzle. I really want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Get trying it. to trying to find some of this hidden stuff. Uh, I would really like to try that too. And you know, also just have a look at some of all the things they've said they've changed, like the key binding interface, uh, the utility skills, trade lines, um, camera, all these chats. You know, all these small things they've said they're going to change. Have a try and have a look at that. See how that feels. You know. Mm -hmm. 
try and actually because there, there's so many things changing that I'm I'm partly expecting the game to be a 2D platformer, you know, because they've just changed so much, and I, I'll, I'm really looking forward to see how how that shines through when you're sitting with the game. Yeah, definitely. Um, and of course, you know, we'll be we'll be doing a ton of recording with all this, right? Right. And definitely. trying to get all all different kind of videos out there. Yeah, and I also want to look at some of the new UI uh, stuff and. Uh, Things they've got going on, so uh, that'll be good. Yeah. And so you will just when is the beta again, Ozzy? About the times? Uh, yeah. Beta weekend event two will begin Friday, eighth of June at noon, minus seven GMT, so nine nine in o'clock the in the evening in Europe. Yeah. And for people that live in the time zone from UK, that's eight o'clock. Uh, I will add the time zone uh, converter thingy post that everyone <laughs> posts always uh, in the comments. Yeah, that's probably so a good idea. Look at it. Yeah. And yeah, and we we're saying the downloader. If if you want the game, uh, make sure to update it. They have a streaming downloader, so it's just launch it and it will update itself, and so you're ready. You'll have your old characters and all that. So. Get uh, get that done. Get that out of the way, so you're ready for everything to go crazy tomorrow or today, depending on when this video is out. Yeah, indeed. See how detailed this is. What? Oh, you can't see this. I can't see that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Elsie. It's like button. You are true art. Yes. Yes. That is what that is the icon. No, not the dragon thing. The hand thing. That is the icon you should also be pressing below this video. So thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we would really like your feedback on this episode. Also, uh, what are your plans for this beta weekend? And what are your opinions of betas and everything we talked about? Please. What is uh, what changes are you looking forward to like, trying out in the game? You know. Yeah. Because there's so much information here. There must be something you know. And yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot. Give subscribe. A subscribe to our channel. We uh, Facebook, got a lot of Twitter. Guild Wars content already. We are going to have a lot more Guild Wars content soon. And now I'm going to punch cheese in the face. <laughs> Damn wrong, wrong side! <laughs> <laughs> it's mirrored. It's mirrored. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> Epic fail. Well, yes. <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone. Till next Thank week. Thank you guys. See you later.